Welcome back to part two. In this part, we'll take a closer look at the various conditional statements as they are used in C. As previously shown, the simplest conditional statement is the if statement. An example is shown here. We use the keyword if, followed by parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we put the Boolean condition that we want to be tested. Note the condition in this example is not actual C code. It's just a placeholder for now. The code block inside the opening and closing curly brackets forms the if statement's body. We say that the body is bound to the if statement. The if statement body could consist of a single line of code or multiple lines of code or even additional nested conditional statements. As indicated in the comments, this block of code will only execute if the condition evaluates to true. If the condition evaluates to false, nothing inside this code block will be executed. An if else statement is similar but includes an alternative block of code which is bound to the keyword else. If the condition evaluates to true, then the first block of code is executed as before. However, if the condition evaluates to false, then the alternative code block is executed. The two code blocks are mutually exclusive and exactly one and only one of them will be executed. It's easy to see that the if else statement is a generalization of the if statement. An if statement is just an if else statement without the corresponding else block. Finally, an if else if statement provides yet another generalization. Here we use a combination of keywords else if and provide multiple conditions. In general, you can provide as many conditions as you need to to define the logical flow of your program. Each code block is still mutually exclusive. As a consequence, when designing if-else-if -if statements, the most specific conditions should come first, and the most general ones should come last. In fact, you can omit the final else block if there's no final case to consider. Omitting the else block is exactly how we got the simplest if statement. Now, to specify an actual condition, we start by using numerical comparison operators. The first two are strict comparisons, and the second two are, are less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, respectively. The order of the combinations of the two symbols is important and matches exactly how we would ordinarily read them. We also have the strict equality operator that is true if and only if the two values on either side match. We have to use two equal signs here because a single equal sign already has a defined meaning as the assignment operator. The opposite is the inequality operator, which uses an exclamation point followed by a single equal sign. This combination of symbols is meant to approximate a slash through the equal sign in mathematics. Each of these comparison operators may be used in a combination of literals, that is, hard-coded numerical values, or variables, or entire arithmetic expressions. Let's take a look at a few examples. First, let's create three variables to work with. As our first example, we can compare A to a hard-coded literal value. Here we're comparing it to zero. If A is any other value, the conditional will evaluate to false and the print statement won't execute. Let's compare two variables. This print statement will only execute if A and B hold the same value at that point in the program. You could also do the following, but it's not recommended. That is, you can put the literal on the left-hand side and the variable on the right-hand side, but it isn't really natural. Variables should generally go first. You can also make comparisons with entire expressions. Here the entire arithmetic expression will be evaluated and then check to see if it's less than zero. Another example of something that you can do but probably shouldn't is to compare literal values. Ten is always going to be strictly less than twenty, so there's really no point in defining a conditional to check that. Now let's take a look at some numerical comparisons in the context of if, if else, and if else if statements. I'll define two variables to hold game scores. Now let's compare them in a simple if statement.
If the value stored in the Husker score variable is strictly greater than the opponent's score, then we'll print Huskers win. An example illustrating that an if-else statement is a simple generalization of an if statement is as follows. We can repeat the if statement and then add an else statement. I didn't print that Huskers lose here because the else condition takes care of the situation where we've got a tie. To take care of that separately, let's go ahead and define an if else if statement instead. I'll start with the basic if statement. I had to add in the second condition because there are actually three different scenarios. This would be enough in general, but if we want to print something in case of a tie, we need to add a third and final else statement. Now if the value stored in the variable Husker score is strictly greater than the other value, it'll print the first statement. Otherwise, if it's strictly less than the value in the opponent's score, it'll print the Huskers lose statement. Otherwise, if neither of those conditions evaluates to true, then the only remaining scenario is when the two values are equal, in which case it'll print the final statement. Finally, observe the good coding style that we've been using. No spaces were used between the keywords and conditions. However, we did include one space before each opening bracket. The opening curly bracket of each code block is on the same line as the keywords. All closing curly brackets are at the same indentation level as the outer conditional statement. All code blocks are indented to the same level. There are other coding styles out there, and no one particular style is better than another. The most important thing with code styling is consistency and following the same rules throughout your code, whatever they might be. Typically, in a real situation, you would adopt and adhere to a style guide.